Staff shakeups at the White House, front and center this morning. President Donald Trump's communications director, Mike Dubke, handing in his resignation. He did it on May 18th, in fact, after three months on the job. And speculation is mounting over whether Press Secretary Sean Spicer will maintain his role as well. Here's a look back at what President Trump had to say about his communications team in February. In terms of messaging, I would give myself a C or a C plus. I think I've done great things, but I don't think I've, uh, I and my people, I don't think we've uh, explained it well enough to the American public. I think I get an A in terms of what I've actually done, but in terms of messaging, I'd give myself a C or a C plus. Joining us now is business expert, Status Factory CEO, author of 21 Performance Secrets of Donald Trump and What They Teach You at Wharton Business School. Clint Arthur is here. Clint, if you were, because you, your motto is hire slow, fire fast, should people have been gone even earlier in terms of communication? Now, we should point out Dubke did resign, but again, given the poor communication strategy we saw early on, would you have been firing people right and left very quickly? Donald Trump went to Wharton when I was 14 years old. I made up my mind I was going to go to Wharton. I graduated 4.0. And if there is any insight into the mind of Donald Trump, it's what they teach you at the Wharton Business School. They give you all these tools of analysis, statistics, accounting, computer science, and that's the higher slow part. It takes time to analyze the situation. But then if you make a mistake or you violate the trust, you're fired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please. This should have happened a while ago, as far as I'm concerned, because he knew, if he knew in February, he's saying it was a messaging problem, I give myself a C, a C plus, and my team, you can't do that when you're in this kind of, what he calls, you know, the war with the fake media on him. You can't have a contentious relationship. You've got to have everybody on the same page. As far as I'm concerned, the communications team should have been replaced a long, long time ago. And I'm really looking forward to seeing who's going to come in, because this stuff is not that complicated. Yes, that's probably one of the hardest jobs in the White House today because things are constantly happening. It's a crisis response situation. However, get everybody on the same page. Get those talking points out. The health care launch was a debacle. The fact that they all weren't talking about the same things, talking about the benefits to the American people, complete disaster. And I blame that on the communications director. What, does it, what would the, be the changes? What would you be doing in terms of the messaging out of the White House right now? Sean Spicer really is overdue. He really is. I hate to say it because he's got a very tough job. But it, it is about coordination. And it's about everyone being on the same page. And that just hasn't been happening. But it's isn't, it, isn't it on the president to get them to keep the message straight and to keep the team w working on one page? And isn't it a tough job that these people have when you don't know what the president's going to tweet on a given Sunday morning, morning or, or Monday morning. Right. And, and They're it, constantly being moved, from, jostled from one position. And the firing of Jim Comey in terms of the communications was completely botched. I don't, I, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who would disagree with that. He did send his right hand man to go deliver the message, but it's a difficult situation to fire the FBI director. And when he decided it was time for him to go, boom, he was gone. Boom, indeed. Counselor to the President Kellyanne Conway just weighed in on the, the staff shakeups this morning, or Mike Dubke resigning. Listen to this. I did not know Mike Dubke before he came on as communications director. I did not know him well. I know, I know he's worked very hard here. But people in administrations tend to leave on their own volition as well. They tend to uh, find that working 18-hour days um, in different environments are maybe not what's best suited for them. Um, your reaction, Clint? It's not personal, it's business. And she's right. People leave of their own. They can't handle the pressure. Sometimes he will give them the pressure to go. But all in all, you have to remember this is business that they're trying to take care of. I think you have to remember, and I think you're, you're very well aware of this, that part of his style is letting people go. In his own campaign, he went through three different campaign managers. He had the right one for the right time. Mm -hmm. um, he's not wedded to any particular person, even though he may like them personally. You're there because you've got a job to do. So when he thinks that Sean Spicer isn't doing the job right, we, I think we should expect right. that well, Sean Spicer will move on. But until then, you've got to assume that Trump sees an advantage to having Sean be there versus it sort of as a counterpoint to the tweets. And I'd say that a lot of the Republican messaging problem is not just the White House or this administration. They've got 
Congress and the Senate, which are full of individuals who are trying to score their own points with their own constituents, many of whom are not really Trump supporters, and they've got their own agendas, and that's part of the challenge. Well, speaking of campaign managers, there was a report, there were reports out, or at least some discussion, that Corey Lewandowski could come back to the White House. Hello. Strategic deployment of assets, 100 percent right. right. The right person for the right job at the right time, just because you're right today doesn't mean you'll be right tomorrow. It's just business. Right. And I think it's really important that the president has somebody he has full confidence in. And I think one of the things that we're seeing right now is that he didn't have full confidence in his communications team because they weren't all on the same page. So someone like Corey Lewandowski might, might have that full confidence. Now, I think that what's really, really key is that this person gets everybody on the same page, and that's not happened so far. It's also about building relationships with the press. Sean Spicer should have had really close relationships instead of an antagonistic relationship that's going on here. So In all who fairness cares? to Sean, they were very much against Trump. There's all this anti-Trump media, and they were attacking, attacking, attacking. So it really didn't matter what he had to say. He was going to take the hit. Who gets the credit, who gets the credit though, because the trip overseas was pitch perfect in terms of the U.S. audience. You can have critics uh, among our allies and uh, in the media, of course, you're going to hear that. But in terms of how well organized it was, mm -hmm. it was ch long and chock full of events and really important, even emotional moments at times. Who gets credit for orchestrating that? Because again, you need more of that here back stateside. Yeah, there's no question that we need more more of those kinds of moments where you see him as a full leader, everything done in the right way, which was done all up until NATO. Those moments, uh, the, I mean, I'm not going to call them photo ops, but when you see the, all of the different ones, he went to speak to Muslim leaders, he went to go speak to Jewish leaders, he went to go talk to the Pope, it really seemed uniting. The and optics I think that were was... great. It was straight out of what they teach you at the Wharton Business School. The first thing they teach you is the net present value of money theory, which is a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. What's the first thing he does when he meets with NATO? He gets them to give us more money. So that's well, straight. Well, he's telling them to give us more money, whether they will actually spend, spend more of their defense remains to be seen. They will. They yeah, will. They will. How, how about the chief of staff? You're talking all about the communications mm. team. If they need to get everyone on the p same page, isn't that the job of the chief of staff? And does he need to go? Runs previous. Well, look, I think that the fact that the communications director resigned May 18th and we didn't know about it today is a good indication <clears throat> that he's already got somebody in place and in mind, and there's bigger shakeups well, to come with a communications plan to follow. Well, somebody's not leaking that because, again, <laughs> if that had right. come out while President Trump was overseas, like he might have resigned May 15th, but why? take the spotlight off of the trip overseas to talk about your communications director. That's right. I think part of this problem goes back to hiring slow and firing fast. Many of the f former administrations have had deputy press secretaries in place by this point, more of them than, than Trump has, and that again goes back to the fact that his administration is not fully filled right. out yet because he is hiring slow and right. firing fast. And you can't help but wonder if this isn't why Sean Spicer left the, you know, got sent home to deal with budget communications early rather than um, mm. what they really. Yeah, you know, this could be the real reason behind that. Clint, good to see you. Great Thank to you see so you. Thank you so much for being here. Clint Arthur. Coming